Well, hey there, boys and girls. This is uh, quite possibly the first flip class of the year, and this one is all about the Earth, which is, you know, this thing down there. There it is, you know, being the Earth. That's nice. Uh, as you can see from the picture here and the picture here, the Earth is pretty much mostly water. You know, we've got the United States of America. There it is being all, you know, America. But for the most part, the Earth is all covered in water. Now we're going to study a lot about the ocean, but to really understand the ocean and the ocean floor, you have to understand the geological processes that are going on. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Uh, remember, the Earth has many different layers, you know, just like Shrek does. You've got the crust and the upper mantle. Now together, those often is called the lithosphere, which is technically just under the crust, that really top part of mantle that's still really hard and rock-like. And then below that, you can see in this area here, you have the asthenosphere. Uh, asthenos is a really fun Greek word that means weak. It's really weak, flexible, flimsicated, and just in general unimpressive. Underneath that you have the lower mantle, which is also referred to as the mesosphere. It's got meso in it because that is the word for middle. So that one right there, that's the mesosphere. Then you have the outer core and the inner core. Keep in mind that the outer core is a uh, sort of liquidy. It's this gooey and it's got flow to it. And later on we'll talk about why that's really important and what that actually does for the earth. I'll give you a hint though. Turns it into a magnet. And then you have the inner core, this solid area that's pretty much just spent uh, from, you know, the, the fusion that's been taking in place inside of the earth. So here, in all its grainy goodness, is uh, <laughs> the layers of the earth. And you see the cat that was trying to be in the video. That's Kitten Little. Right now he's down there playing with the dog. I'd move the webcam, but it gets crazy. So, uh, you know, you have the lithosphere. Again, we're going to talk about the difference between uh, continental lithosphere and oceanic lithosphere in a little bit. But first, let's just know it's lithosphere, asthenosphere. Then you have the mesosphere in the middle outer core which is liquid inner core which is rigid it's worth mentioning the asthenosphere is sort of liquidy uh, this mantle is actually very rigid like they're saying right here and there's some convection in there but for the most part it's very stiff and rigid and hard so now that we understand the layers of the earth a little bit let's get into plate tectonics which is actually relatively a new thing plate tectonic theory uh, really originated back in the 60s and is a pretty new thing it's actually based on some observation we got continental drift you know Wegener's whole thing just he couldn't put a good mechanism with it and we've actually seen continental drift uh, rebranded seafloor spreading uh, which was actually discovered by uh, Captain Henry Hess, a U.S. Navy captain back in WW Dose. He was just floating around looking for the German U-boats, pointing his uh, pointer down at the bottom of the ocean, which was looking at all the things he saw on the ocean. And so we have the Earth. It's made up of these main plates. There are more little plates that are hanging out in there, around there. And, you know, we won't really care too much about them, though. But these are the main plates. I'm not going to make you memorize them. That's what books are for. But you should probably know that the North American plate is where North America is. The South American plate is where South America is. The African plate, well, you can see the pattern. Pacific plate, that's a big old ocean. So those boundary lines in between that we were showing here. Uh, these lines are the spaces in between the plates and we call those the plate boundaries. There's uh, three basic types of plate boundaries. You have convergent, uh, divergent, and transform boundaries. This is a picture that's showing you uh, the middle of the ocean, size continents, and you can actually see that we've got a nice divergent boundary here with the spreading center in the middle. And then over here on the side, you can see that we have a subduction zone going down, subduction, and that is a convergent boundary where they're coming together. Here's another one showing you, uh, you have in the middle, you have your spreading center, creates uh, all kinds of really fun stuff on the surface like mid-ocean ridges, etc. We'll get more into that a little bit later in the unit. But again, uh, you have these divergent boundaries where you have this plate is moving in this direction and this plate is moving in this direction, so they're diverging away from each other. Now what happens is when the plates here run into the next plate over here, is the plates come together, you get a subduction zone, and you have a convergent boundary. And all this is generated is because of this whole uh, mid-ocean convection thing. So you can see here we've got this hotter 
area down here where it's hotter. See, that's the flames for heat. And it gets hotter, and that causes things to rise. And then as they rise, they come up towards the surface uh, where they interact with that rigid uh, lithosphere, and it sort of spreads off to the side. Again, this is all happening in the asthenosphere. The idea with a lot of people is, is this all goes down, down in the mesosphere, but uh, not so much, children. Instead, it's happening in the asthenosphere, and you get these convection currents, just like a uh, lava lamp. So the, uh, the air, it's, or sorry, not the air, the lava, the magma underneath the surface, it comes up, it gets pushed in either direction when it encounters the uh, rigid mantle, and because it's really viscous, it's really thick, it's really gooey, as it goes, it's moving the plates with it. So all of the plate boundaries are a result of plate movement, and all of those plate movements are a result of those convection currents happening underneath the Earth's uh, surface. So here is a nice model. You can see uh, the mantle convection driven by heat, and you see all these parts that are coming down are showing where the magma has risen up and then drove back down. So here is a nice uh, animation showing you a 3D model of the convection on the Earth. Uh, well, under the earth, and you see how it sort of looks like uh, water, really. Now, this German guy, he's actually the one who invented, you may have heard of it, the weather balloon, which is, you know, kind of a big deal. Weather balloon, that's Alfred uh, Wegener. He had this whole uh, idea of continental drift. It never really got to be a theory, though. That's kind of a bummer. Not a theory, still just a hypothesis, because he could never come up with a really good mechanism. So it was largely untested. In fact, it actually got refuted pretty heavily because uh, he actually thought that these uh, tectonic plates, which are made mostly out of granite and felsic, really low-density rocks, were actually cutting through the ocean as if they were like a ship, like an icebreaker ship. <laughs> and the uh, ocean floor is made out of basalt. It's really, really dense, and it didn't take physicists long to be like, ah, nope, that's not possible. The continental crust would uh, be destroyed. Not going anywhere. And then this guy, uh, Henry Hess, here's his picture. There he is, all pretty and Hess-like. He actually came up with this whole idea after discovering the mid-ocean ridge. And he published this whole idea later on in the 60s. And he actually was able to come up with that whole uh, mantle convection current as the mechanism. So now we have a mechanism to go with the idea, and then the scientists are happy. But this didn't happen for a long, long time. Wegener was like way back in the uh, 1910s. You know, he was World War I era. This guy took till World War II, and way after the war was over, before he finally published his ideas, and it was accepted by the scientific community. So here's a picture actually showing you, that you can see right here, the spreading center going right through the middle there. That is our mid-ocean ocean ridge and you can see on either side it's spreading and it creates all this really beautiful surface topography that we're going to talk more about in class here on this map you can see the highlighted blinky areas those are showing you all the different spreading centers in the ocean these are all mid-ocean ridges this one right here is the main one that's the atlantic mid-ocean ridge that's the one that Hess discovered you know going back and forth here fighting the germans looking for their german u-boats with his sonar powers over in this area here this is the pacific plate over here and you can see we have the spreading center where the north and south american plate are moving away from the Pacific plate. So you have another spreading center over there. You can see there's others all over the world. And again, uh, that's due to this whole idea of the magma convection. But then on the other side of the plate, it's going to encounter another plate, be pushed into it, start going down, subducting. All right, so here we have an animation just showing uh, how the plates have moved, forming the different continents over time. There it was. Very nice. Who would like to see it again? Rewind. The moral of the story, there's a crap ton of stuff happening in the ocean that most of us are never aware of. So you need to dig your head on up out the sand. Come along on this journey, children. That's the video. Let's talk about some plate tectonics. Thanks for watching, everybody.